Hello, barbecue enthusiasts. Happy Thanksgiving. It is uh, Thanksgiving Day 2018. Uh, this is a Yoder Frontiersman on a competition cart. Uh, I have a number of stick burners. This is uh, one of four. I've done some reviews on the uh, the other cookers. Haven't been in a big hurry to do a review on this one, uh, in part because I haven't used it recently. So. Uh, also, there's uh, probably not a whole lot of interest in this. This uh, particular cooker fills a very specific niche, and uh, I doubt the market is very big. By the same token, however, uh, anybody looking for information on one of these is uh, probably not likely to find very much. Uh, I know there wasn't much available when I bought this one, so uh, I'll go into a little more detail later about uh, my reasons for having purchased this pit. Uh, temperatures are a little wonky right now. I just loaded uh, some more product into it and stoked the fire. Gave uh, the ribs a spritz. Uh, this pit, uh, typical of Yoder's, is uh, a very high quality. Uh, this one did have a few little issues and I'll point those out later in the video. After I've uh, cleaned this up tomorrow, I'll go into detail and give you a thorough tour of the uh, of the pit and, and uh, some of my thoughts and experiences with it. So. Uh, as cookers go, it uh, does cook fairly evenly. It uh, does have an adjustable heat management plate. Uh, you can create a hot spot in there. Uh, again, I'll detail that a little better once I can show you the, uh, the inner workings of the pit. But uh, I typically uh, like to cook at uh, relatively even temperatures across the pit. And although not perfect, I do have another cooker that I can get to cook almost perfectly evenly across the entire cook chamber. This one will cook relatively evenly across most of it, but it does require a little bit of fiddling. What do we have going in here today? Well, it's Thanksgiving, of course. We've got a couple of turkeys uh, in the 11 to 12 pound range. Uh, a little bit of uh, green chili turkey gravy smoking underneath it. Catching some dripping there. And for dinner later this weekend, got some ribs on and uh, then some uh, ABTs or atomic buffalo turds. Not very eloquently named, but they are tasty. Hello again, barbecue enthusiasts. Uh, once again, we're looking at a uh, Yoder Frontiersman on a competition cart. Uh, this pit has a 30-inch uh, diameter by 6-foot long cooking chamber, 72 inches long. Insulated firebox. Optional insulated firebox. Also optional on this pit uh, was some badging, custom badging. Uh, it, this is meaningless. It's uh, pure, purely out of vanity. It's a depiction of uh, the private signal that we uh, fly from our boat and flagpole. Handle for pulling and steering the pit. Ball valve grease drain. Uh, there's a little hanger here for the uh, pail. A little Yoder Smoker brand badged pail made in China that you can't hang from that because uh, it doesn't fit up in there. A uh, thumb screw here goes into a uh, hole up here to uh, keep this from uh, moving during transport. Uh, also, there's a thumb screw here so you can remove the stack entirely during transport if you wish. Uh, it is designed to uh, to move around. Uh, again, uh, fairly small market for this, I'm sure. Uh, I imagine the, uh, the only reason that anybody would want a pit like this uh, would be uh, somebody who's actually in competition. 
uh, or catering or that kind of thing and wants something with a fairly small footprint but uh, still has some mobility. In other words, to, they don't have the room for a, uh, a trailer. But the, uh, the problem is you do need a trailer to haul it around on. So uh, that can be a good thing if uh, you have a multi-purpose trailer and uh, you also have the pit. There is a uh, ring there for securing the pit to the trailer. Heavy duty. There's another one back there. The other end of the pit, difficult to see and equally difficult to access. And secure the doors. Again, for transport. I think I mentioned it before, but this is a 30-inch uh, in diameter cooking chamber, 72 inches long. Storage drawer underneath, uh, again, can be secured for transport. Uh, not really sure what you'd store in here. Uh, if it were heat sensitive, it's something you definitely need to remove before you uh, started cooking on it because this does get quite hot. Uh, in addition to the uh, optional uh, insulated firebox, uh, I had them add some uh, hooks here for tools, both ends of the, uh, the shelf. Uh, in the end it turns out to be virtually worthless because I, uh, I don't really use in any tools. Most of the stuff I put on or take off the smoker I uh, either do with my bare hands or uh, some towels or anything like that. I don't use tongs or anything like that uh, on the grill I do but not the smoker. So. Uh, the only other thing included with this was the, uh, the little clean-out shovel here, so. So that's about it for accessories. Uh, they did ask me when I ordered the pit if I wanted a uh, single door or the double doors here. And uh, you'll hear about it again a little later in the video, I know, because I already filmed the, uh, the latter half of the video, so. Uh, but uh, I wish I'd gone with the single door for, uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, uh, not the least of which is that the um, uh, you don't lose this uh, this area in cooking here, and uh, you have free access to the entire cooking surface along the whole pit with the uh, with a single door. So if you're looking at one of these, uh, I might suggest uh, considering that. So uh, I have another cooker that's uh, very similar in design and size to this one, and it does have a single door, and it's much more convenient. So. Uh, my concerns over heat loss when you're opening one big door were, uh, were rel relatively unfounded. When I ordered this pit, uh, I had already determined I would drive out and pick it up. Uh, the shipping on this pit would have been prohibitive. Uh, this, was, this is a very expensive pit, and I don't say that to be braggadocious, but uh, to bear in mind as, uh, as I go through some of uh, uh, the features and uh, deficiencies, or what I consider deficiencies of this pit, but uh, uh, just bear that in mind. But the, uh, the shipping on it, uh, if, you, uh, if you do order one and have to have it delivered to your location, is, uh, is going to really drive up the cost. So, uh, but one thing we, uh, we noticed when we got out there, we, uh, we made a marathon drive out there, got a motel room, I met the folks at the uh, factory first thing in the morning, loaded it up right away, and the very first thing I noticed on this pit, uh, I didn't say anything to anybody because uh, it was my own lack of diligence, but uh, this pit is crafted from 3 16 inch steel. So uh, I have another Yoder, it's a smaller pit, and it's uh, manufactured from quarter inch steel. Uh, whether there's any practical uh, issue with that, yeah, it's debatable, I guess. So, uh, But uh, a pit this size and this expense, I expect it to be a little more heavy duty. Now, I think I know why they probably use 3 16 inch steel on this. Uh, it's already a very heavy pit, and it would have been even heavier for a portable pit. Uh, how much uh, the additional 16 inch, inch of steel on the cook chamber would have uh, uh, added to the weight of the thing, I don't know. But uh, uh, it does make the thing seem a little tinny compared to my other pits. Uh, 
uh, whether it affects the performance, heat retention, that sort of thing at all, I, uh, I, I can't really say because I have a combination of uh, features on this pit that I don't have on any of my other pits. Uh, and that is the insulated firebox and the uh, 3 16th inch steel uh, cook chamber. Uh, Yoder, as I'm sure you know if you're watching this video, has a reputation for very high quality and, uh, and this pit is no exception. Uh, with one exception. And I'll get to that here in a second, but uh, uh, everything is uh, very well crafted, very nice neat welds. They don't hide them at all because uh, they don't need to. Uh, they're just uh, exquisite. Uh, the competition card itself is very, very, it's 10 gauge steel, I believe, very heavily, heavy duty, heavily built, <laughs> heavy duty built. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, so, but uh, anyway, very well assembled. Um, it's going to last forever. It's, uh, it's definitely an heirloom, heirloom type deal. Uh, the exception is that uh, when we got this thing home and I really started going over it, uh, this door uh, bound very badly. Uh, in fact, the hinges chattered like crazy and the door would, it, you, it took a fair amount of physical force to move the door into any position and it was stuck there. So, um, and I think in part because it is 3 16 inch steel is uh, maybe what caused that and the uh, and the subsequent issue when uh, when I fired this pit up to uh, just do the initial burn in and then the initial cook uh, it belch smoke badly right along this uh, this stretch right here and you can see that is not a tight fit at all and uh, the uh, the curvature of the uh, and this is true of all the doors in this area and i think it might have something again to do with the 3 16th inch steel i think when they cut these doors out the uh, the steel may have warped or sprung a little bit and uh, and opened up a bit of a gap uh it does leak smoke from these areas which is not a big deal it's a pipe smoker you'd expect it to leak a little bit of smoke in fact it should uh, but uh, in this particular case um, you could look at this seam over here on this open door and there was actually daylight visible along this uh, this flange over here and I'm not kidding the smoke just uh, just belched out of this so uh, in order to uh, well without using tools just uh, uh, kind of logically and selectively uh, applying pressure by hand to the door to uh, to try to flatten this out a little bit and everything else it actually freed up the hinges so they don't chatter and squeak anymore and you can see the door moves freely now but uh, uh, it didn't solve the uh, the issue with the uh, leaking over here i actually had to take some rtv and uh, and run a fairly heavy bead of it i don't know how well it shows up here but a fairly heavy bead of rtv along this whole section here to uh, to get this uh, uh, from leaking in a fashion that I thought was unacceptable. So, which brings us back to the uh, the expense of this pit. Uh, frankly, I think a defect like that is uh, is rather egregious. Uh, and again, the surprise of the uh, the thinner metal in the cook chamber uh, uh, has always left a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, there's a recent uh, post on Yoder's. Um, they they have their own uh, forum. And uh, there was a recent post in there regarding the, uh, the thickness of metal, and they claim that they use quarter-inch steel on all of their cookers, except the uh, Cheyenne, I believe. Uh, and that may now be the case. I don't know, but uh, it certainly wasn't then. Uh, I certainly had no... It, it, I kind of consider it my fault for not questioning what, uh, how thick the metal on this was going to be. Uh, but uh, I certainly had the impression that all their larger cookers were fashioned from quarter-inch steel. Uh, another option on this uh, particular pit was color. Uh, I got one of the three standard colors that uh, are available. Uh, I would have preferred maybe a blue or a green, something like that, and I did broach the uh, the topic of getting a custom color, but uh, uh, I don't recall all the issues now, but uh, in the end it sounded like it was more trouble than it was worth. Uh, the other colors are that are available are black and orange. Uh, the black on black just seemed like uh, too much of a dark color. 
and black is so hard to keep clean on vehicles i figured probably the same way as a uh, uh with smokers so uh black and orange is a a good color combination but it's uh, been grossly overdone due to the popularity of a, a motorcycle brand so i didn't want to look like a shill for that so i went with the silver Okay, so here we are now, stripped down just about as far as we can go, with the exception of removal of the stack. Uh, really no reason to do that. Uh, filming in some uh, quirky light here, I hope you can see this. But it's, uh, it's all cleaned up, ready for the next cook. And again, stripped down as far as it'll go, you'll notice that the, uh, the heat management plate here is fixed in position. Uh, this is one of the things I like least about this cooker. Obviously half of the heat, heat management plate you can remove, uh, but this section is welded in. Uh, it makes it very difficult to get up underneath this. There's not a whole lot of room in there, and there are sections of this that I have never cleaned simply because I can't reach it. I do have a, a scraper. This did not come with a pit. I actually ordered this later. Uh, I figured since they uh, fabricated the pit, they'd be able to uh, make an instrument that would uh, match the radius of the pit. Uh, they sent this to me for the uh, mere price of, uh, I think it was about $180, $178, bucks, somewhere in that range. Um, to their credit, they offered to give it to me for free. I was talking to them about building another pit at the time, but uh, being the independent cuss I am, I insisted on paying for it, and I wish I'd uh, let him send me a send me a free one now, uh, because this uh, simply does not match the radius of the pit. Uh, it's it's next to worthless as far as uh, scraping anything out from under the uh, heat management plate over here. So uh, I haven't gotten around to devising a tool myself. I think with a uh, putty knife and some PVC, I could put something together that I'd be able to reach up in there and uh, both scrape off the underside of the uh, heat management plate and uh, get at least some of the stuff off the uh, bottom of the cooking chamber there. Uh, firebox with the log grates removed. and the log grates. Super heavy duty. Uh, unlikely that those are going to burn through for a long, long time. Very heavy expanded steel and uh, large diameter steel rod. Uh, these things are heavy as hell and uh, a little awkward getting in and out. In fact, uh, you kind of have to uh, come in from the top and underneath and uh, work your way out. So. While we're back here at the uh, the firebox, it's probably worth uh, noting the uh, uh, drafting issues with this. It draws fairly well, uh, certainly much better than the other Yoder I have. Uh, but uh, firebox on this is mounted pretty high. As you can see, the top of the firebox is uh, even with the uh, bottom of the heat management plate there. And uh, when you're building a fire in here or stoking the fire, uh, you'll get a lot of smoke uh, coming out of this. In fact, uh, it was interesting the other day, I could never catch it on video, but uh, a couple, three times uh, uh, during the cook, it got a little breezy and the, uh, the wind was blowing the opposite direction. In other words, it was blowing from the stack end of the smoker to this end. And uh, the flames were actually licking up out of the vents here. And you can see a little bit of uh, scorching along there. And that's that's not just from the other day, that's been going on for a long time. Uh, this isn't terribly well sealed up right there. In fact, you can see daylight there. There's a gap there, and uh, that smoked up pretty badly. But uh, this badge on the back of the firebox here is stainless steel. Uh, the whole thing used to be this color here. I polished up a spot the other day before the uh, the cook, just to kind of see how much it would coke up uh, during a uh, the course of a single cook. So I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on this, but you can see on the left-hand side is the polish from the other day, and I polished it up again this morning on the right-hand side. So that's uh, that's how much uh, collected after just one cook. 
And again, this whole badge is stainless steel, and as you can see, it's uh, it's black. You wouldn't know it except that the ends are still have a little bit of shine to them, or sheen, whatever you want to call it. Also worth noting, uh, again, fire management on this one is uh, quite a bit simpler than uh, uh, the other Yoder that I have, uh, but it does still exhibit some of the properties of the uh, of the other smoker. Uh, the insulated firebox, it's for, and, and a much larger firebox in this case, is, uh, is probably not a very fair comparison. But uh, uh, it is uh, the only smoker that if you uh, if you do kind of drop the ball and let your coal bed get too small, uh, you do have to add some charcoal to it. And uh, it's really easy to overbuild your fire and trying to get the pit back up to temperature. Uh, the good news with that is that uh, you do at least have a lid on this. So if you do overbuild your fire... You can uh, spill some heat until you get your fire back under control. Uh, the lid here is uh, half-inch steel. It is not insulated. Uh, the, most of the rest of the firebox is insulated. The uh, the back panel is not. But uh, what little of the uh, the forward face is above anyway is insulated. And then the uh, the sides obviously are insulated. And uh, down here along the bottom. And of course, the entire bottom of the pit. Uh, as mentioned before, at least I hope I mentioned it before, because I'm filming this before the uh, the part you just saw. So <laughs> hopefully, I'll keep some continuity in this. But uh, uh, yeah, I, in retrospect, I'm not sure I'd uh, do the uh, the insulated fire pit again or firebox again. Uh, also, while we're on the topic of the uh, insulated firebox. Uh, I like to warm my splits on top of the firebox, uh, help them ignite a little bit faster. Uh, this gets really hot, so it's uh, the splits will start smoldering on this if you put them there. Uh, they stay plenty warm over here on the side, so uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, I have read in the uh, in a few forums and that sort of thing, guys uh, discussing the advantages of a uh, insulated firebox, and uh, for some of them, uh, at least a perceived advantage is that the uh, the firebox doesn't get hot. They're concerned about uh, kids or grandkids, that sort of thing, burning themselves on it. Uh, it's nonsense. Uh, this gets extremely hot, so maybe not quite as hot as the uh, the exposed steel, but uh, definitely hot enough to burn. So if you're going to spend the extra money thinking you're uh, getting a safety issue out of it, forget it. Uh, I think the main advantage to the uh, insulated firebox, uh, or at least uh, in theory, is uh, reduced uh, fuel consumption, better heat retention, uh, that sort of thing. So. Um, I, uh, pondered long and hard when, uh, before I ordered this as to whether to go with it. And, uh, since we live in a, uh, uh, climate that uh, has some cooler temperatures during the winter time, I decided to give it a try. Uh, one of the advantages or disadvantages to a uh, insulated firebox that I had read in uh, some locations is that, uh, because, uh, it does retain the heat so well, uh, it requires less fuel, less frequently, and consequently you don't get as much smoke. And uh, I kind of have a feeling there may be some truth to that. Uh, after having had our meal the other evening and uh, not having cooked on this pit for a long time, having been using other pits, uh, that definitely did not have that rich smoky flavor that, uh, that I'd gotten accustomed to with the other pits. So, um, I, again, some definite truth there, I think. So, uh, again, this pit differs... The two significant differences on this pit from the others I have is the insulated firebox. And this is the only pit that I have that does not have at least uh, one quarter inch or three eighths inch steel on the uh, cook chamber. Uh, this one is three sixteenths, as I mentioned before. So uh, either because of uh, one or the other or both, I can't put my finger or my thumb on it, but uh, uh, finger on it, whatever. Uh, it just, uh, the quality of smoke in this uh, pit is a little bit different. Uh, the other pits I have, uh, when they're doing what they're doing most of the time, and that's just sitting there not doing anything, uh, still smell good enough to eat. You walk by those and you get a whiff of the uh, the smoker, and uh, man, it smells like you're in a barbecue joint. Uh, this one is not the same way. It, not that the, uh, the odor that this one uh, uh, emits is uh, in any way foul or unpleasant, uh, but it is different. It's, uh, again, I can't put my finger on it, but uh, uh, it's a, just a, a little more acrid, maybe. I don't, uh, 
don't know how else to describe it, maybe a little more burnt. It's just not quite the same uh, smoky odor that you get from the other pits. When, again, when they're just sitting there static, not in use. Um, and you can also notice the, uh, I hope it shows up on this, the seasoning on this pit differs from my other pits. Uh, the seasoning on the other pits is absolutely glossy. And uh, this is more of a crinkle finish. And the only thing I can attribute to that to is a higher heat dissipation rate with a thinner metal. Uh, there may be other things going on, a complex relationship between the insulated firebox, the quality of smoke that's coming out of that, et cetera, so on and so forth. I don't know. Uh, but uh, just, uh, just something I've noticed that's different on this pit. So, as you can see on the uh, the heat management plate here, uh, you've got this uh, device here which will allow you to introduce uh, a little more uh, raw heat into the cook chamber. So, uh, it seems to work okay. I think uh, I think it would work a heck of a lot better if it were like my uh, uh, the Horizon. Uh, I'm not doing a direct comparison between these, but the, uh, the Horizon uh, moves back from the other end of the pit and you're getting that heat introduction across the entire pit and not just from one corner over here. So, uh, I really don't use this a whole lot. Uh, if I do have it cracked at all, it's usually just a little bit, not much more than about that. So, uh, do get a little bit of difference in as far as uh, temperature from the back to the front of the pit uh, with this system, but it seems to dissipate pretty quickly uh, and spread out. The uh, uh, the temperature seems to even pretty well throughout the rest of the pit. Now this pit runs fairly evenly, but it does have some spots that are, uh, that are warmer than other spots in the pit, so uh, under any circumstance. And of course any pit is going to cook differently depending on how you have the pit loaded, uh, how you have your fire going, what kind of fuel you're using, etc. so on and so forth. It's uh, The list is endless, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I do find consistently that uh, there are hotter spots in this pit. Uh, not dramatic. Uh, most of the temperatures are within uh, 50 degrees of each other, uh, with the warmest part of the pit being uh, back in this, uh, this section here on the top shelf, so probably from about here on back. Uh, and that is probably as you'd expect because all your heat is uh, headed for the stack there. So uh, the horizon I have, that it, uh, it's a similar pit to this uh, as far as size and configuration, uh, and it tends to run the same way. The, uh, the temperature differential isn't quite as great, uh, no more than about 25 degrees, but uh, and the rest of the pit runs dead even most of the time. So uh, this one not so much, but uh, certainly within uh, uh, a reasonable temperature difference and, and uh, to a point where you don't have to rotate foods a whole lot. So. In this pit, like any other, uh, you can run it uh, as low, well, almost as low as you like. Obviously, there are, uh, there are limits, but uh, uh, I like to put uh, meats on a relatively cold cooker, uh, still a safe temperature, 200 degrees minimum, uh, to develop a nice thick smoke ring between uh, 200 and 225 degrees for the first hour, hour and a half the meat is on. Uh, it's easy enough to do with this, and then you can pump the temperature up to a constant 225 or higher. Uh, I also do uh, poultry and that sort of thing in this pit at 350 degrees, again, no problem. So you've, uh, you've got a wide temperature variation there, depending on what you want to do. So, But again, my chief issue with, uh, with the design of this pit is this uh, this heat management plate system and i guess i should be thankful when i uh, ordered this pit i knew cleaning it was going to be a problem uh, we live in a uh, uh, an area where wildlife is uh, is kind of an issue especially bears and so we uh, typically have to keep our cookers relatively clean uh, we're fortunate in this location that uh, the uh, smoker resides in the garage so it's uh, it's not as critical and it's a good thing because uh, this particular pit is harder to clean uh, but anyway, I got off track there a little bit. The, uh, uh, most of the information available to me when I ordered this pit was that uh, this heat management plate was permanently installed all the way through. Uh, and I think I had read in one of the forums someplace that uh, guys cleaning these things were uh, getting this pits hot, building a hot fire in it, and, uh, and then hosing them down, uh, which... Uh, didn't sound really attractive. I don't know how you can do that without making a mess. I don't have an area where I could do that without having a pan underneath. And as you can see here, uh, there's not a lot of room for a large pan or a bucket underneath this. It's not like you can put a five gallon bucket underneath or anything like that. It's, uh, it's a fairly shallow space here, probably about uh, 10 or 11 inches, somewhere in that range. Uh, also probably worth noting, <laughs> um, let me give you this little uh, 
bucket to hang from the deal. Well, it's impossible to hang from the deal because of the, uh, the way that drain is configured. So uh, I usually just take a, an old coffee can, set it underneath there, and uh, use that until it's full, throw it away, and then set another one on the ground underneath it. So it's an uh, uh, easier way to handle that. And that reminds me of something else. I don't know if this uh, cooker was uh, ever intended to be used as a water cooker. It does have a ball valve, so you can close that up nice and tight. And unlike my other Yoder, uh, there is a lip at this end of the cook chamber, albeit not a very high one, so you could put much water in the bottom of it. Uh, I suspect that uh, that lip is there this is purely supposition on my part, but I suspect the lip is there to uh, knowing that this is uh, going to be used in a variety of locations and you're not always going to be able to get it on a level surface. Uh, it's to uh, prevent grease from running back into the, uh, the firebox more than anything. But uh, I don't see any reason why you couldn't put a little bit of water in the bottom of this uh, to use as a uh, uh, water smoker or to introduce some uh, moisture into the cook chamber. Uh, the only problem I see with that is there are two bolts that uh, bolt the uh, the smoker to the, the competition cart, the cart itself. And uh, and I don't know if that connection is watertight. So, again, I've never tried it, but uh, apart from that, I don't see any problem with doing it that way. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, draining uh, everything into a, a suitable recept receptacle at the other end when you're done. So. Uh, also worth noting, uh, going back to the heat management plate here, uh, this typically isn't much of an issue for me. Uh, I typically have on top of the uh, the lower cooking grate a, uh, a water pan. And uh, so this area of the smoker doesn't get a whole lot of use as, uh, as far as cooking is concerned anyway. So it's uh, the uneven temperatures from uh, one side of the tick or front to back on the cooker isn't as big an issue. So. And this is the uh, the other half of the uh, heat management plate. Uh, this is fashioned out of a one quarter inch plate. Uh, it's about two and a half feet square, and uh, it weighs a ton. It's uh, it's a ball breaker getting it in and out. So uh, that combined with the uh, the relatively wide shelf, you're having to lean quite a ways over this with that heavy plate of steel to put that in and out. So, uh, yeah, pretty easy to herniate yourself if uh, uh, in doing that, just uh, as an FYI. Okay, so this half of the heat, heat management plate is uh, reinstalled. I just horsed that back in. Uh, as with their other smokers, the way this is set up is you uh, have a uh, progression of uh, holes starting small closer to the firebox and getting larger as you approach the other end of the pit. Uh, again, seems to be fairly effective on this uh, on this smoker, so. But, and again, this, uh, this may have changed. Uh, I don't know how these are constructed. I did a little bit of search to see if there's any information on uh, a frontiersman. Uh, before I did this video, and I can't see that anything has been added since uh, since I was shopping for this one uh, years ago. So, uh, but uh, I don't know why. For one thing, uh, they couldn't divide this in half. Uh, do the same exact thing they did here, only uh, do another division of these plates to make them easier to, to get in and out of the cooker. Uh, I'm uh, I'm not getting any younger, and I can foresee a time when I'm going to have trouble getting this thing. I mean, it's already heavy. <laughs> it's tough to get in and out as it is, and uh, uh, it's going to reach a point where I'm not going to want to do it. So, uh, And likewise with the remainder of this, uh, the only mechanical thing you really have going on here is this uh, uh, sliding heat management plate here. So why they couldn't uh, make all this removable to make cleaning easier uh, is beyond me they had to uh, permanently mount this section in here I don't know uh, and again make maybe divide this in half just to make it easier to uh, to remove the individual plates uh, and likewise uh, as long as we're at it why couldn't they have uh, just uh, welded a collar on here uh, had the rod go in and put a pin through it to secure it or something of that nature so you can disassemble the whole thing and uh, get all be able to take all this out so uh, I think it would be a much better design, much easier to keep clean and uh, deal with, but uh, that's my opinion.
Okay, so now we have uh, the three sections of uh, the bottom cooking grates installed. Uh, I got a nice large area here. The, uh, the cooking grate obviously extends uh, through this divider right here. It's uh, probably worth noting at this point, when I ordered this pit, they asked me if I wanted the uh, uh, the double doors or if I wanted a uh, uh, one single door running across the whole pit. Uh, at the time, I thought, uh, and, and they mentioned for roasting whole hog, that sort of thing. I thought, well, I'm never going to be roasting whole hog. Why would I want that? So, uh, and I didn't uh, want to, well, I was concerned about the heat loss, having one big door on here every time you open the door to check on one thing or another that uh, you're going to lose all that heat. Uh, I know based on the, uh, the other cooker I have, similar to this uh, in size and design, it's not an issue. Uh, on the other hand, that cooker also is, is uh, fashioned out of 3 8 inch steel rather than 3 16 so it, uh, uh, it recovers uh, rather quickly after the, once the door is closed. And this one does too, but again, we're not dealing with uh, one large single door, so. And we have an insulated firebox here. Uh, but one other thing I like about this, uh, this pit, uh, there's quite a distance between the uh, shelf here and the door handles. Every other pit I have, the uh, the shelf is mounted much higher to the handle, so if you have any uh, product trays, that sort of thing sitting here, you've got to slide them out of the way before you can lift or close the door because you're going to stick your hands in the food or the handle's going to hit it or whatever, so plenty of space there. Also, the shelf is uh, is quite deep. Uh, plenty of room to, uh, to put stuff on here. The only drawbacks of this shelf is it does not fold in any way. It's uh, fixed in position, so uh, so you're stuck with that as far as the width is concerned. If the, uh, if the smoker of storage space is an issue, or transport for that matter. Okay, this is one of the upper cooking grates. Uh, it's inverted right now, just so you can see. There are a couple of keepers on here to keep this on the, uh, uh, the rail. So... You can slide these racks way out, and you don't have to worry about anything tipping off. Uh, it is uh, it is helpful to have that slide out. Uh, obviously, it'd be much nicer if the uh, the bottom rack slid out, because uh, they're the ones if you have stuff in the back with the uh, the upper shelf installed that are going to be tough to reach. But uh, simply by uh, virtue or nature of this design. Uh, you don't have that option available on the lower cook racks. Okay, all back together again. Uh, as you saw in the uh, very opening scene of this uh, video, I had a couple of turkeys on the top rack, albeit uh, relatively small, at between 11 and 12 pounds. Uh, but they did uh, fit on the upper rack, so uh, plenty of space there. They were towards the center, of course. It's uh, towards the sides that uh, gets pretty confining. Uh, and you've got a uh, full six and a half inches between the uh, the lower cooking grate and the upper cooking grate. So, uh, again, no problem loading this thing up with uh, full packer briskets or uh, taller foods such as turkeys, that sort of thing. So... Uh, a little bit about why I ended up with a pit like this. Uh, we divide our time between a couple of residences seasonally, and uh, I didn't want to have to buy... I already had one pit, and I wasn't really satisfied with the uh, uh, its performance. Uh, I wanted something that uh, would cook a little more evenly uh, across the uh, entire cooking chamber. And, uh, and this is what I decided on. Um, this particular design uh, just because of its uh, perceived mobility. And uh, it is uh, relatively easy to move around. This thing weighs over 3,000 pounds, uh, probably quite a bit more because of the insulated firebox. So, uh, And it is still relatively easy to move around as long as you are on a hard level surface. Uh, if, you, uh, if you get off into anything soft or anything else, it's virtually impossible. And that was the problem we ran into. Uh, this was uh, going to get moved around the side of uh, a little cottage we have, and uh, it was uh, nearly impossible to move on the gravel driveway, let alone uh, around the side of the, uh, uh, the house on native soil. So, 
uh, that quickly evaporated and it got moved back down here. So uh, as I mentioned before, you've got to have a trailer that can accommodate something like this. I'm fortunate enough to have a variety of trailers. Uh, I prefer to move it on a, a dump trailer that I have. Um, merely for the fact that uh, it's easy to get it on and off the trailer. I use uh, an electric winch like this drag it up in there and then let it back down the ramp again it works rather well uh, it's easy to tie down in that trailer just because it's designed for heavy equipment and uh, and I don't have to unload the trailer when I get it to its, or the, uh, the smoker when I get it to its destination and like the uh, enclosed trailers the uh, dump trailer is open and uh, so I can just leave it on the trailer and cook on it so makes it very convenient uh, but that's kind of why we ended up with uh, a pit like this uh, again, as far as the performance of this cooker, uh, it uh, performs very well. I, uh, I don't have too many complaints. Uh, fire management on this pit uh, is relatively easy. It is a little quirky. It, it uh, uh, retains some of the characteristics of the, uh, of the other Yoder I have, but, uh, but not nearly as bad. So the, uh, uh, I have two other smokers, a uh, Horizon. Marshall 30, which is uh, similar in size to this uh, this pit. Uh, it's my favorite smoker. It performs the best. And uh, then I also have a, a Lone Star Grills vertical offset. Uh, totally different uh, configuration in smokers, so uh, really not comparable. Uh, but fire management on that pit is uh, much easier than this. Well, I shouldn't say much easier, but uh, somewhat easier than this one as well. So uh, not that it's bad on this one. This one works pretty well. And uh, once you've uh, kind of gotten used to uh, fire management on this one, it uh, it perks along at whatever temperature you want uh, fairly easily. So, uh, finally, uh, a little bit uh, a word on Yoder itself. Uh, as I say, I've got uh, this is one of two Yoders that I have. Um, as far as a company, they are excellent to deal with. Uh, if you uh, call and don't get the person you want, uh, you'll promptly receive a return telephone call. Uh, they handle everything very professionally. Uh, as far as uh, delivery dates, times, that sort of thing, they're, uh, they're right on the money, if not early from what they promise. So uh, it, uh, I would highly recommend them in that regard. Uh, I think they probably have, uh, there's some deficiencies with their stick burners. I think uh, as far as a uh, uh, barbecue manufacturer, a lot more of their R&D goes into their pellet smokers. Uh, in fact, it was uh, the way I came across Yoder in the first place was I, because I was in the, uh, I was looking to upgrade from an, an electric cabinet uh, to something a little better and I was looking at a pellet smoker. Uh, we live in bear country, and it quickly occurred to me that uh, uh, the advantage of the pellet smoker and uh, not having to uh, to monitor the thing continuously was uh, uh, negated by the uh, the need to monitor the thing because I have to make sure that uh, bear isn't about to maul my dinner. So, <laughs> so I thought, well, let's go full traditional and get a stick burner, and that's how I ended up with my uh, first Yoder stick burner. Uh, sold on the quality of that one, if not the performance, uh, is the reason I uh, started looking at this when I wanted to upgrade to uh, something with a little larger cooking chamber that uh, uh, would uh, cook a little more the way I wanted to. So, uh, But a uh, great company to, uh, to deal with. Uh, I'm not sure I'd buy another stick burner from them, but I'd definitely check them out for a uh, pellet smoker. Uh, in summary, as far as the, uh, the cooker itself is concerned, it uh, performs very well. Uh, as I say, it does uh, have a few little uh, quality control. I shouldn't say little. I think one is, uh, is, is kind of a biggie for a, a pit as expensive as this so uh, and it's got a little a few other little odds and ends that make me think it was maybe a Monday or a Friday smoker uh, but nothing that uh, is is a big deal but again it's a very expensive smoker and that kind of thing really shouldn't be rolling out the door so uh, a little disappointed in that regard uh, but uh, apart from that uh, again the smoker performs well is relatively easy to manage uh, I would put it a close second behind the uh, the brand H that I have uh, that's uh, comparable to this one in size, particularly when you consider uh, the cost of this particular smoker. So, um, obviously these uh, these things aren't scripted. Uh, I'm shooting from the hip here, so I've uh, probably uh, or I haven't repeated myself time and time again. I probably left something out. So. 
Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. Uh, I do have some other smoker reviews. I'll uh, put, uh, they're all on a playlist. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll try to, uh, to answer those for you. So uh, no need to like or subscribe. That's not why I'm doing these. This is uh, purely entertainment and uh, for anyone's benefit who's looking for these. I know I'm, uh, I'm appreciative of this kind of information uh, when I'm looking at uh, buying or, or uh, doing or otherwise. So anyway, have a dandy day.